there. Thank you so much, Julie. I appreciate that. No um, just got so excited. Uh, so my name is Kate Balch. I am the director of marketing with Copysmith. We're the AI copywriting platform for e-commerce teams and marketing agencies. Today, we're here talking with Julia Linehan of The Digital Voice about her background, modern day agencies, and the challenges they face. She's the founder of The Digital Voice, a boutique B2B PR agency with boundless energy for PR, social marketing, and virtual experiences. That said, welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. Really, really lovely to be here. And always good to be with the Copysmith team. I can never sing your praises highly enough. So you've got a fan here. Oh, thank you so much. We say the same about you. <laughs> well, in the spirit of time, we're just going to go ahead and dive in. We've got yes. some questions left here. If you have questions, feel free to leave those in the chat for us and we will get to them as and when we have time. All right. So Julia, first and foremost, we'd love to hear a little bit about you and the great things that you do at the Digital Voice. Perfect. Yeah. So I'll try and keep it in a nutshell, really. And, and I think I can because what we do is you had, you mentioned the word energy. We are a B2B PR agency with boundless energy. And I think that's the resounding thing that I want to get across. We are small. We've been, um, I, I set the company up 10 years ago and it's grown and grown and grown very organically over time, but the largest growth in the last three years. And we've become known as a PR agency that does far more than PR. We are an extension of our client's team and we'll look after every aspect of, of their communications, their PR, their marketing, their social. We are their voice, the digital voice for them. And especially from a position of those that have, that we work a lot with disruptors, challengers, startups. We also work with those going to IPO as well, but they've often grown with us over the last eight, eight years or so. But for those that are smaller, what I love is being their voice and it's the, and being a loud voice for them in, in, on every possible platform. And that's what the digital voice is all about. That's incredible. And that's so rare with agencies these days that they become part of your team. And that's such an mm. incredible core of what you guys do. And we feel that in just in working with you. So that's incredible. Uh, what types of customers and projects do you, team, do you and your team support? So we solely work in B2B, ad tech and MarTech. And, and it's very, I, I often get asked by other companies, would we look after them? And I have to say, no, we, it's, like, it's really important to specialize, to focus. I've worked in this industry for a quarter of a century now. So I've lived and breathed it and I, I know it inside out. And I think sometimes it's easier to stay true to what you really know and love. So ad tech and martech are the, the industries. And as far as projects, we honestly do everything from, uh, we do things with them like they'll have a big event going on or a global all hands and we'll take care of that event planning or they'll be looking at a large launch. So Gum Gum recently did a huge launch and we'll take care of that. So that goes across every platform. It's really every aspect though. Some will be a massive bit of marketing automation and SEO, but throughout all of it is that PR and comms layer. So it's not really project-based. It is becoming just that, that, that team for them on those, um, across all those aspects, but certainly staying true to ad tech and martech. Great. That's, that's incredible. And how do you differentiate yourselves from other agencies? Oh, see, I love this one because I, I, I've worked with a lot of agencies and, and I, I always found them to be really professional and always just, you know, I haven't got a bad word to say, but they are different. And I think it stems from the fact that this is my baby that I set up and I am still on every call. Um, I'm the founder and managing director and run the team of 18, but you'll find me on every call supporting the team. What I've done is I've created a team of experts. They're incredible. And each one of them is a team of 18 freelancers. Some of them work lots, work almost full time. Others are less so. And it's about knowing that they're all absolutely spot on for what our clients need. And when a client goes, we need to go into this. That's fine. Not a problem. We go and get that expert. Or we grow that. And gradually the team has grown and grown. And when we've, because we've delivered for the clients, we keep that team of freelancers. So we've ended up growing and growing. So I think that's what makes us very different. We are very much over promise and over deliver. Uh, we're always, we're able to be very flexible, very 
we can do as we want because they're not beholden to shareholders or I have no corporate red, red tape. We are very much an agile agency, incredibly passionate. And I think that's what sets us apart. It really is. We, we do become, we are a family ourselves, a work family. And a lot of our clients would say that we have become their part of their teams and their family and it. And we hope that really shows through. So we, we would, I would, I would probably hands on heart say we, we, we set ourselves apart by that, by the energy, the passion, the agility and the expertise. That's incredible. And we were just talking about this, I know, but so many agencies will say that that's what they do, but don't yeah. act, act that up with action. And we've seen that time and time again with you guys, you're so committed to your work and that's just incredible. Well, I think it's like so it's when you do a pitch, so I'll take care of, we don't, we do work on, we're very blessed that we actually are full and have a wait list and we only work on referrals. But when we're doing that, when we're when we are doing when I am doing pitch, when I'll speak to the, them and I'm not just selling them a story and then you never see me again. And I think that's what you get with some of the bigger agencies that it's brilliantly sold and it's all wrapped up in a beautiful bow. And then when you start, you end up getting a junior account exec. And that's fine. And honestly, as I said, I've got nothing bad to say about the brilliant PR agencies that are out there in the market. I think the only difference is we tend to go, you, you get a lot of us, like we have one new client start with us today. There was 10 out of the 18 of us and 19 of us on the call because we all want to get to know them. And we want to feel them to feel like they're, we're, we're right there for you. And we're on Slack with them. We create Slack channels and we'll just, it's feeling like that. And you, it's, um, I think that's really important. So yeah, we definitely walk and walk the walk and then talk it. Is that the right way? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You said it perfectly. A hundred percent. That's incredible. And, uh, what are the main challenges you would say you face in supporting your customers' content needs? Yeah, this is a tricky one. So keeping pace, I mean, you've got to find this as well. I mean, you're working in, in as a software provider and tech platform and working in AI, it changes all the time. And I see this with Copysmith, that I see well, you're just adding on another layer and another layer and another layer. That's because you've got to keep pace. And that's probably our biggest challenge that we're constantly, our job is to make the client stand out, to gain attention, to be on the, the latest trends, both in terms of thought leadership um, you know, how do you respond to Elon Musk and, and what and buying Twitter? How do each of our clients, should they respond? Should they not respond? Knowing when it's right. So there's that side and then knowing what platform and then knowing how to do it and how to gain attention. Attention's possibly, we actually, we weirdly, we work with a lot of attention clients and I'm fascinated by how much, how many, is it 10,000 times a day you get receive advertising messages and it's the same way. It's all of those, all of those messages, all of those things fighting for your attention. And the same goes with PR. We've got to get them noticed. That is a challenge. And it's one we relish, but it is a challenge. And yeah, it's, you must find it as well. All the time. And pace and speed is, is probably our biggest challenge. And to your point, AI and, and specifically copywriting AI is such a new industry that it's, yeah. it's kind of the wild west out there. So, you know, we're just keeping our our speed going and a momentum going and just doing the right things and finding the next thing yeah and jumping exactly. on it first <laughs> knowing what hopefully it is. that's, that's <laughs> always a ball if we could all have one <laughs> yeah. but to your point about attention spans yeah I was just reading an article the other day that it went from I know in the the aughts and the 2010s there was a lot of conversation around like a 30 second attention span when it came to ads with commercials and things like that and now we're down to like seven to ten seconds which is just yeah, unbelievable that, I mean, yeah yeah, yeah got to grab it grab it quick and we have a statement that we always say to our clients be brave be bold be you because that's what you've got that's your me know what your message is know what your tone of voice is know who you are yep. be authentic those that's the basis of it we'll find the ways to get it in to get it different to, um we have an incredible graphic designer that and a creative team that will come up with brilliant ideas and we're constantly pushing the boundaries, but we have to rely on our clients to be brave and be bold. And we rely on them to know what they want to be and who they want, how they want to say who they are. Really important. Be my, that'd be one of my takeaways. That's huge. And, and you said this earlier, that, that ownership of their voice and just saying like being authentic and owning yeah. that process of having that voice and carrying that through. That's, that's so important in these days. Absolutely. Well, and you already touched on this a little bit, but how, how have you adapted to meet those challenges when it comes to pace and speed and momentum? Oh, 
yeah, this is so pace and speed. So a lot of things we we actually I tend to keep an I keep we have eyes everywhere. So the whole team looks because they're experts. That their, their job is to continually learn and be on it first. So we've got a brilliant social media specialist that knows and lives and breathes social. So she's real. I rely on her to know what to do and what trends are coming up. Our SEO and marketing automation specialist, again, incredible. There's nothing, if it, if it moves in that area, she's on it before anybody else. We also then go down the route of prove it works. So trends are all well and good, but it's got to actually work and perform. So we've invested in a lot of technology that allows for reporting and to show, well, that's where you've got coverage. It's it, we've definitely stepped beyond vanity metrics and look at well let's look at engagement and the whole there's a whole team the account management team will make sure the reporting is done so that you're constantly reviewing changing altering testing failing testing again working and all of that the actual specific things we've invested in and so definitely invest in much more platform based I mean copy is one of those but there's other ones that we use as well and that's that will enable us to get better and faster um, and specifically during the last couple of years we invested in a virtual experience platform because obviously events went out the window so we were one of the first to become a licensed producers on a platform called Remo and we've produced um, our events team are, are beyond brilliant and we've produced I think it's about 128 uh, virtual experiences for the likes of Glamour magazine and Bloom, Bloom Performance Inn and we've done awards and we do Magnite's Global All Hands across three different time zones, and it's a really interactive 3D uh, floor plan. You can do live networking. It's very, very cool. So I think that's how we that's how we adapt. We look, we seek for technology that will support what we're trying to achieve. That's incredible, and I think there's a there's a nature of of agencies not adapting technology and kind of find, falling behind that trend. So I think you guys are, are right along that idea of adapting new trends, adapting new technology really helps it take on more of the work and help Absolutely. you kind of have, we always say it, we wear one less hat when you have that technology yeah. platform that helps you, that can automate something or can make that that process that might take you a couple of hours, just shrink that time down to a couple of minutes is incredible. Oh, hugely it doesn't grow up hugely in so. And, and you guys do it best because my goodness, it's so, I mean, we turn out, um, we have 15, 15 wonderful clients and we try and give them all equal amounts of, of love. And, it, and we work very, very fast paced and we deliver so many outputs, but it is essential to have to have tools in place like CopySmith that just there are certain, certain things to just speed up and, and quicken up. So when a piece of press goes live, I'll give you this as an example, we tend to get a lot of coverage. So you're looking at, say, um, our press team just did one yesterday and there was 26 pieces of coverage. Now, the, the idea is that, that each of the, all the team at the client can put that piece of press and each of those different news out. So it's floods linked in. In order to do that, they need 26 individual bits of copy. Who do you go to? Copy some AI, plug it in, content enhancer, content rewriter, bang, blah, 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 blah. Then the t social team, there are, we do have a social team that also do, the, do loads themselves. It's all done. But when you're talking about a mass and speed, you've got to get it out. And in that, that's where it's invaluable. Absolutely. Those micro optimizations give us everything. Yeah, definitely. Now, now I want to get into some fun things about you. Um, what's been the proudest moment in your career? Oh, do you know what's coming up? I'm uh, the Digital Voice is ten years old in June fourth. Oh, I'm um, really, yeah, and I've, I've, I can honestly say, hands on heart, I'm, I'm beyond proud of my the the team. I mean, absolutely huge love for the team. It's, it is something I'm most proud of that I've pulled together. Um, alongside with Casey and Cameron, who are my right hands, we pulled together this team of ex, my right and left hand, not, I've got two right hands, <laughs> that pulled together these, these experts. And we see in them, each one of them has the same values. And our values of the digital voice are love it, own it, improve it. Um, and do it all with a massive smile on your face. And that's, that's the goal. And all the people are part of that. So the team, our clients, some of my clients have been with me at that. Oh, there's Casey. Hello, my dad. We love our team. We love Copy Smith. There you go. There's a, there, there. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> 
but we also so the clients a lot of them have been one of them impacts been me nearly nine years I mean that's a lot of them are three four years and so I love our clients and I I think I'm proud them I'm so proud I will be so proud on our 10-year birthday as well yeah coming that's that's gotta be it that's incredible and from a work from a work perspective yeah that's an incredible milestone and such a testament to your work yeah uh, what are the tools you rely on to give your clients the best experience? Oh, Amber says, couldn't think of a better team and dream team supreme. <laughs> I love that. Amber's power, she's wonderful. So the tools we rely on, God, we've got so many. Let me think. Um, obviously, we've got CopySmith. We've got Response Source, Notified, Doodah, Trello. We love Trello, Hootsuite. Um, oh, God, what else? Slack. We're on Slack all day long. I really, we're 100% remote companies so we're all dotted all over the world but it doesn't feel like that because we have slack running throughout the day and we really make use of slack because it's part of our day-to-day google is essential for also running a remote company so i would probably list those and technologies like remo that make us stronger i would say those that's quite a lot listed but i'm actually always looking always on the look for for technologies that are going to go yeah that's that's interesting that's going to work the way that new technology is adapting and just coming into the market every day, I totally agree. I'm always on the lookout for something that's yeah. going to us, give us that edge. So totally hear that. Uh, what are the common myths or misconceptions about agencies that you fight against? Oh, God, the biggest myth is uh, that they can get national press coverage. Oh, <laughs> duh. I know if I've got if I've got Casey and Mary work on our press team, we're just going, oh, la, la. I mean, we absolutely we do actually deliver national press coverage and we do deliver tier ones. Casey's laughing. But it's that expectation that you're a small company, especially within AdSec. And yet you're like you think that the Times is going to pick, come knocking at the door. And and I think it's that it's that pressure. And often when you do pitch work and you get a company that comes to you and says, we'd like to you to do our PR. And as you go through, you say, what are your goals? Well, I want to be in it. I want to be in this national newspaper. I want to be in campaign. What do you want to say? What do you think you're going to say? Well, I'm going to tell them about my products. Okay, so you're not even, it's not even about your opinion or your thought leadership or like, you know, that. It's, it, they're not going to take it, that sales. So it's, it's the myth is that we can easily secure that. It takes an awful lot of hard work. Um, another myth of, that I think needs to probably depart is that we only rely on those vanity metrics I was talking about. I think that's long gone. I really think PR delivers. PR performs um it, it's not in question anymore because you can really track it see it and it's it's so much more when you do one tiny bit of, of press boom what you can do with that in terms of then taking it further across social using it as a synopsis for a speaking session taking that news and, and pitching it out as a podcast session and really delving in news jacking other bits Look, setting up an event to discuss it in a round table, doing a little infographic that explains it in detail, breaking it down, doing whatever it takes. And I think that is what um, the myth we want to get rid of, the fact that PR is just there for vanity and it doesn't perform. That is a load of baloney. Yep, it totally is. agree. Retweet. I can't agree with that more. Mm. What, are the, what are the KPIs that you lean on to, to show that back to your customers? Good question. So it varies, it varies by clients. I think engagement has to be the biggest one. I mean, you can, for each platform varies what you want to see, but you want to see engagement, you want to see reshares. Um, you want to see also the fact that that drew the attention, if it's thought leadership piece, that that actually drew the attention, led to sales and led to business. And it really does. We have a number of uh, our clients have written thought leadership pieces or Q&As and gone, oh my goodness, we just had a phone call from XXX clients and they want to do business with us. One of the tricks is you work with clients and say to them, what are you hearing from when you go on these meetings? What are their challenges? What are their objections to, to, to spying from you? And then you go, the, you write a piece that actually and that addresses that challenge so they're equipped to go back in and go well I've seen in the recent press RMD talking about da, 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 da. Uh-huh. and there we go and I think that's just different techniques like that so yeah it really varies but certainly not um I mean so vanity metrics still will always play a little bit because there's nothing more proud than going yeah five million reach nice that's incredible no big deal 
Yeah. No, we do, we do the same thing when it comes to our sales conversations and how our team approaches that we're constantly asking them, what are the objections you're hearing? Like, what are yes. the things that are concerns? Cause that helps us a ton with our own content and understanding Absolutely. things that keep people up at night and how we can help them with that. Yeah, I think so. You've got to use the, the objections are after all, actually sales points They're they're indicators that they might buy, will buy. Absolutely. And now who are the biggest inspirations in your career? Oh, this, uh, I've got so many, so many. I mean, I would say, I, I know I've said bang on about my team and I know, and it's, it really is honest. They, they inspire me every day. And um, that's the first one. I probably also, Caroline Mastoras, who's the current president of Bloom UK. She works at Salesforce. She's got a huge job at Salesforce, but the amount of time and effort she puts into Bloom and Bloom is a professional network for women. I'm the head of PR and impact there. And I watch what actually not just Caroline, but all of the senior leadership team at Bloom are just wow and blow my mind. I'm, I'm also blessed to be co-founder co -founder of Digital Leading Ladies and all my co-founders there are, are brilliant and inspire all the time. So um, yeah, there's, and, and also there's a few other networking groups. So I honestly have, I'm surrounded by these leaders that I've almost, and I've known a lot of them for decades and, and I love watching them just fly, fly, flourish and fly and that's so exciting but it's even more exciting now to see the next generation and see my my team who are growing and and a lot of them starting out in their career and not so it's um and and watching them and seeing i can see i'm inspired by where i know they're gonna go it's incredible. Power, really powerful and that mutual inspiration that's something that i think especially with women in leadership is so common mm. that like hearing each other's stories is something that just only gives us that motivation and that inspiration. I think so. Definitely. I think so. It's incredible. All right. Well, we are, we are down to our last question. We're going to wrap up a little bit, but going into wrapping this up, I would love to hear what the big trends in content marketing you're keeping an eye on for 2022. Oh, okay. Now we touched on one attention. Yes. That's one. Um, stand out is going to be that. So how do you grab attention? And you're going to see a lot on the attention economy. Curation of content is a key one. And the context as well. We're going to have to work harder to align on what your message is and where you're placing it. And if your audience is the right audience. That leads on to another one. Audience first content and context. Can't be reliant on audio, on date cookies anymore. We've got to, but we've still got to think where are our audience and how can we get through to them? And it's, and, in, and all of that, the trend is going to be cut through the noise, cut through the complexity, go back to the basics of what you're trying to say and who you're trying to say it to. And God add some pizzazz and some creativity around it. And it was zing. That would be pizzazz is so important. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah, lazy marketers beware because all the trends are indicating we're going to be pushing the boundaries. It's, yeah. it's not in volume. It's less is more, but it is getting it right, yep. getting it interesting, get, get, be creative, innovate and understand who you are trying to reach and how you're going to do it. And then, and then really be brave, be bold, be you. I say, I'll say that again because I really think that's an important message. Love that. And that this is so incredible, Julia. I'm, I know I'm walking away from this so inspired, even just that last moment. Oh. This is incredible. Um, it's well, and I know so much fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. This was incredible. I know this was a lot of great data and I, I'm so excited to take a lot of this and work in our own marketing. So definitely walking away inspired. I know everybody else is too. Thank you. All Thanks right. so much. Thank you all as well Thanks for everyone. joining we appreciate your time. Keep in touch with us. We'll have a couple more events coming your way soon. And I hope everyone has a great week ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Kate. Bye. Bye. Bye.